Hey gang, um, today is just a real quickie on polyester round slings and choking them on truss or on an I-beam or other objects. I've got a piece of be beam there from the brake tester and I've got a, a piece of truss just hang sitting here between the two. So what I've done is showed you a vertical um, choke and a diagonal choke. Right now for both of these, the load is set up so that it's pulling back against the choke if the load is over there, meaning the performer is behind me on that wall over there, that way. Because what will happen is this pulley will orient that direction and pull against the back of the choke here, which means the horizontal loop of the choke goes over the pulley hanging side and prevents it from moving that direction. It locks it in place. Okay, now part of this, this is a vertical uh, choke and that's a diagonal choke. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure I use up as much span set as possible because the distance of the eye that's left after you choke it adds to your overall efficiency the shorter that is. Um, you already have to contend with the length of your carabiner and the length of your eye on your swivel here, you can see. So you can only get so tight, and right now I'm 25 millimeters up to the truss, okay, under load. So that means that's going to be as short as I can get. I'm going to have very little slop in the system every time I take up tension on this. If you have 150 millimeters down here plus this, so you've got this much room on every, on every span set to swing, you add that up over six pulleys, eight pulleys, ten pulleys, you've got a huge amount of distance to pull before everything's in tension, which means your pulling efficiency with lifting people even on a hand pull is minimized. You have to travel a huge distance just to get tension up. Um, on a ratchet, if you've got a, if, if you had 150 millimeters slot times five of these, it's almost three quarters of a meter, 750 millimeters of slop. So if you've got a one meter stroke on the ram and 750 millimeters of slop, you're actually going to get about 25 millimeters or 25 centimeters of pull. So now you're wondering why you're not getting any reaction. It's because you're taking up all the shit in the system the whole time. Nothing's the way it should be. Um, combine that with a poor choke. If this isn't choked, if this is pulled in this direction, instead of back against the sling, but in this direction, it's going to slip and gradually keep lengthening out until it's way out here. Okay, you're not holding it tight against the tube. That's why I always think back choke. So here's your loop. It has to pull back against it in the direction of travel. It should always be back against it when you put load on it. So right now I'm pulling back that way. It's locked directly under the truss and it can't go anywhere. Um, I like to catch two cords on the truss. Um, that's how most people fly trusses, either catching bottom two and top two when they put them on a chain motor or, or the, on two span sets, one on each side to catch the chain motor. But they catch two points on the truss, top and bottom. Um, that allows the whole truss to work as a structure together. You're not just pulling from a single tube. Okay? Now, in arena rigging, that's because you have lights clamped at a single point all along the bottom of this, which is your load, and the truss supports that load. Yes, the weights are all here, but they're being span setted to a hook, which the whole truss is then supporting, okay? Um, it's a little different than flying dynamic people, so you always want as much as you can get out of them, so I always catch two sides of the cord. This is a vertical, and in order to get this vertical so tight, because it's a one meter span set, I just took an extra wrap at the top. Okay, so we started, we wrapped, we came under, and we wrapped it under, and back choked it against itself. Now I'm tight here, and I'm tight here. I've got this ladder beam side of the truss supporting this. Okay, um, this will work good. And this one's a diagonal, it's the same concept, but done diagonally, and I don't need to take an extra wrap because the diagonal distance, I ate up what I used in the wrap here to have still a very short choke here. And again, it's back pulling, back choke against it, so it'll tighten itself up, okay? So it always helps me to remember back choke. 
um, meaning you're pulling back against the span set in the direction of force. So you need to orient these so that they are in the correct way. Okay, so you're pulling the correct way. So this is set to go that direction of force. If I was going to wrap it so that it would back choke in this direction, I'd just wrap it the opposite way. You'll always know because the direction of force, the direction you're pulling the pulley, will have the loop of the end of the choke around it. You'll see the end of the loop of the pulley with your eye coming out from under it, and it will be readily apparent which direction you're pulling. Okay? So let me, if I was to change this one, let me just give me one second to change one. tight here, I'm into the stitching, but that's the way it is. So I flip this one, and you'll notice that now the choke is in the direction of the force. So this pulley is going to fleet this way, okay? This choke is going to tighten up, so here's your cross of your choke, and it's back choked against that. There's where your pulley is going to fleet, it's tightening up the choke here and it's around the second part of the cord. So back choked force in this direction. If you looked at this on the other side, you'd see the cross of the span set in the direction of pull. Okay, you're always pulling back across the choke. That lets you know. So whatever direction your force is gonna go in, that's where you should see that back choke. It's an easy way to check to make sure you've done it the right way. Okay, so that's the important part to remember. The same goes if you want to use these on a beam, if my load is going that direction, I'm back choked here. So the force is going this direction. If I was to do it the other way, Notice that it's pulling back, the force is going this direction. Okay? Now, I don't like something loose like this, and obviously an I beam in the ceiling you would have padding around it. And I would also try to come up with the best way to get the right size span set to shorten this so I didn't have this long loop. Okay? So I might I might get a meter and a half. So here, the load is going this direction. It's choked. So as it load is put on it, it can't, it tightens around the beam and it's pulling back against the choke. So it will orient. Now, the only time this could be an issue, and you have to think about it, is if you're putting pulleys next to one another on an I-beam and they're gonna fleet towards one another, those chokes are gonna wanna slide on the beams towards one another. So you will need to A, back choke them correctly, and B, sometimes you will need to put some form of hold back on the span set so they don't slide down the beams. Because we use them in a dynamic fashion, they tighten, they loosen, they tighten, they loosen, they're not always under tension. So the problem is, is if they go loose and then you hit them with tension, they'll slide. And a lot of rigs have had problems until you pay attention to this with the pulleys changing position. And they keep getting closer to one another because the two pulleys are basically Fleeting like this on a beam to one another. Now it's not like a truss where you can orient them between two nodes. This is between a node, it can only go so far. This is between a node, it can only go so far. I could bring it through here, I could put it through here. That'll index it and keep it on a beam. You don't have that choice. So <clears throat> you can put a beam clamp there to stop it from sliding and put it on the back side of the beam clamp. You can ratchet strap it down you could put a hold back on the choke diagonal to it, to the next vertical piece so that it can only slide to that point and it's under tension, a small leash, but you have to anchor them down. Um, just as a point when they're on the same beam and they're fleeting towards one another, okay? 
So just a few things to think about when it comes to choking polyester round slings on things. And remember, if you're going around beams like here, you're always going to pad the corners. And it's always the same thing. You're going to try also to not have a huge amount of slop in your choke. Um, a lot of times you can take these, because you have four corners to a beam, you can decide if you need to eat up space, you can move them so they're pulling all the way at the opposite diagonal to where your load is. And you can also wrap them through the web and do that and orient them. You still have to just look at how long this tail is. The longer this is, the less optimal it is. Okay? So you either need to get a better sling choice or find a way to eat up the space. Okay? So that you end up with a very short pull. The main thing to remember is you're always pulling back against the choke. So the choke crossover will always be seen in the direction of force. Here, the load is this way. You don't see the cross here, it's on the other side. So that means the load is going the other way. Okay? Just a few things to think about. Um, keep these short, keep them choked tight, and always catch at least two, two beams. It's always the better way to do things. Okay? So that's our lesson for today. It's just our little, just a quick thought, because when I, a lot of times I see people, they choke a sling and they don't pay attention to the direction the pulley's gonna flee. And it really defeats the choking purpose, okay? And there you go, always use the choke specs on the sling. They usually give them to you on the label and what it is in choke and end and wrap, etc. The thing is these chokes are not 180 degree wraps but still you derate them to that choke uh, strength so you'll know what you're using. Always be aware of that. All right, that's it, pretty simple. Take care.